Welcome to this video on the subject of electrochemistry. Today we're going to look at standard electrode potentials. So we want to understand how these standard electrode values are measured and we want to be able to interpret them in terms of the redox equilibria they describe. So where we left off last time was that in an aqueous solution metals will become reversibly oxidized to form their ions um, and then the ions can then regain the electrons to reform the metal. And depending on the metal, they're going to be different positions of equilibrium. So we said that copper is going to be very far to the right, whereas zinc is going to be not quite as far to the right. And the ramification of that is that if we look at the actual piece of metal where the electrons are going to reside, then copper will have relatively few electrons sitting on its surface, whereas zinc will have many more electrons there. And uh, we, I've left the counterarounds out here for simplicity. Now, we would really love to be able to measure the position of these equilibria quantitatively. And actually, the electrons sitting on the metal here provide exactly the means to do that. Because we can actually uh, connect this up to a circuit, and we can actually measure the potential difference um, we can actually measure the concentration of these electrons effectively um, by providing another conductor in the circuit. So here's how we're going to do that. So if we think back just uh, to the zinc half cell for now, uh, and again I'll just put the electrons on here but I'll leave off the counter ions just so that uh, for clarity. Now we could potentially try to just measure the concentration of these electrons but we're not going to be able to do that unless we have somewhere for the electrons to go. Um, and so what we do is we connect up two different half cells. So we connect the zinc half cell um, and we choose to connect it up to something called the standard hydrogen electrode. So this is called the standard hydrogen electrode. And, or shorthand SHE, sometimes known as the standard hydrogen half cell. And essentially what that is, is it is measuring this particular redox equilibrium. We've got a solution of H plus ions here. We've got some hydrogen gas. And we've got here uh, some platinum wire. Full details of what the standard hydrogen electrode comprises are given in a separate video. So please click the link for that now if you want to watch that. But essentially what we're doing is we're comparing these two redox equilibria. And in order to be able to make that comparison, uh, we're going to need a voltmeter, which is essentially going to measure the potential difference. So if we imagine we'll have some electrons building up here on this piece of platinum from this reaction. And we're essentially measuring the difference in electrical potential energy per unit charge that exists between these two conductors in the circuit. Now at the moment, the circuit's not complete. And so we can complete the circuit by providing something called a salt bridge here. Salt bridge. And this is essentially uh, um, usually a tube, a glass tube, either with a sintered end uh, or some just some cotton wool stuck in it and uh, usually has some sort of jelly-like electrolyte here which allows ions to pass between the two half cells if necessary, but there's no electronic conduction allowed by the salt bridge. Now the voltmeter is important, uh, it has to have a very high resistance because if this voltmeter has a lower resistance then some of these electrons will start to move from the high concentration to the low and that will distort the potential difference that you measure. So if we're using a high resistance voltmeter, we can measure the maximum potential difference. And this is known as the electromotive force, which is known as the EMF. And it's given the symbol E. And as long as we're doing this under standard conditions, which again, uh, more details in another video, please click the link now if you want to go there, then we can measure what's called the standard electrode potential. So the idea being that we always choose this standard hydrogen electrode as the left-hand half cell 
and we measure everything else relative to that. So let's see what the results of this are. So I've just stripped away the unnecessary pieces of the standard hydrogen electrode here and we've got a piece of zinc on this side. So this here is just a piece of zinc and you can imagine that there would be a beaker here with a solution and so forth in it. Now when we actually connect these up, and the, I've missed out the salt bridge as well because it, you can assume it's there, when we connect this up what we actually find is that because zinc has a Zinc 2 plus has a lesser tendency to gain these electrons. There actually end up more electrons here on the zinc than there are on the piece of platinum that's part of the standard hydrogen electrode. And as a result of that, we'd say that the zinc is therefore more negative, so it becomes the negative pole, and the standard hydrogen electrode is the positive terminal in this electrochemical cell that's been set up. And the voltmeter tells us exactly the difference in potential between them and it turns out that that is minus 0 0.76 volts in this case. So we would say that the standard electrode potential for this Zn2 plus Zn redox system is minus 0.76 volts. Now let's look at copper being changed to zinc. So now we've got here a piece of copper. Now copper being what we think of as a less reactive metal, um, the ion, the copper 2 plus ion, has a greater tendency to gain this electron, so this redox equilibrium is further to the right. And it's further to the right, actually, than this redox equilibrium here. So this one would be over that way. But copper 2 plus got the greater tendency to gain electrons. So if we imagine what this is going to look like, then standard hydrogen electrode here, if they've got five electrons on copper, is going to have even fewer electrons on it. So in this case, copper becomes the positive pole. It's more positive, so it's got a le fewer negative charges than the standard hydrogen electrode, so it's more positive and the standard hydrogen electrode is more negative. If you're uncomfortable with these ideas of potential difference, then there is another video that you can watch which specifically addresses that. Please click the link now. Okay, so copper the more positive, and the voltmeter tells us exactly how much, 0.34 volts. And so we would say that the standard electrode potential for this Cu2 plus Cu redox system is plus 0.34 volts. So typically we see tables involving these redox systems such as these um, and this is the standard electrode potential. Now often you'll see a little line going through that. I've missed that off in the videos because I couldn't make that symbol but usually it's a sort of plimsoll line symbol referring to the standard conditions. So what we can tell if we see this potential is that the more negative the potential we have species with a lesser tendency to gain electrons or to be reduced. Whereas down the bottom here these ones further down, these ones have a greater tendency. To gain electrons. So if you the more positive you are, the greater tendency you have to gain electrons, the further the equilibrium is to the right. So this equilibrium further to the right. Remember, we always write these with reduction as the forward reaction. And all it means if you're positive or negative is simply where you are in comparison to this standard hydrogen electrode. So in this case, copper has a greater tendency to gain, copper 2 plus greater tendency to gain electrons than H plus has, and so it's a positive potential. So if we think about the following uh, redox potential, then so if we have nickel 2 plus 
and that nickel 2 plus is going to gain a couple of electrons and that's going to form nickel it's a solid aqueous the value for that is minus 0.25 volts so pause the video and just think about what that means in terms of numbers of electrons uh, and the tendency for nickel 2 plus to gain electrons okay so what you should have seen is that this has nickel 2 plus has a lesser tendency to gain electrons than H plus and so its value is negative but that tendency to gain electrons is stronger than zinc 2 plus so it should appear right about here in the rankings so to summarize the position of a redox equilibrium can be quantified by a standard electrode potential E standard E standard measured by connecting the redox half cell of interest to the standard hydrogen electrode and a more positive E standard value indicates a greater tendency for a species to gain electrons and that's the species on the left of a redox equation with reduction written as the forward reaction and then the converse a more negative E standard value indicates a lesser tendency for a species to gain electrons